Uh, request Dr. Hemant to uh, uh, come for his last talk of the day. I thank the organizers, uh, thank Dr. Narsiman in particular and uh, Dr. A. Srinivas Kumar for letting me to, uh, give this talk about uh, what to do when uh, an LV lead cannot be placed transvenously. I think there's a little bit of troubleshooting with regards to my first slide, but while uh, the slides are getting ready, uh, I am hoping that I will make this within 7.5 minutes. Uh, <laughs> the issue here is that what to do when uh, we cannot place a transvenous wire. That is, uh, we have a little experience now of putting epicardial wires directly by a mini thoracotomy. So what we do is patients who they, they try or after uh, a transvenous wire is placed, if it is getting displaced, those have been the indications when we have been putting these on. I just wanted to talk about the surgical placement of the lead. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the slide back. See, the ten, there, there is uh, the problems which commonly face wherein I get involved is lead, if there is a lead dislodgement, even after a replacement, and then uh, extra cardiac stimulation, that is particularly the phrenic nerve is getting stimulated, or if there is a uh, problem of infection. I think that is when epicardial leads in adults can be placed. In pediatrics, I'm not talking about that group at all, because in pediatrics, when you cannot place uh, it through the transvenously, it's a well-recognized uh, procedure to put epicardial pacing leads. Next slide, please. Is it working? Ah, thank you. Thank you. So which are the ways we can do? We can do it by a mini thoracotomy, through a thoracoscopic procedure, or through robotic. I have experience with the first two. Uh, what are the types of leads we can place? These can either be unipolar leads or bipolar leads. I have, we have placed, we have done about six patients so far in which we have used half and half. I don't make the decision. Dr. Narsiman uh, sir makes the decision as to which one is better, and that's, that's what I go in and put in. And this is the way. One big advantage of uh, the epicardial leads is that we have a wider area to play with. And what I normally do is uh, it's a small skin incision in the fifth intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line and then uh, usual desuction up to the ribs, go between the ribs. Usually depending upon whether, uh, if there is a dilated cardiomyopathy which has been the majority of our patients, the issue in those patients is that the pericardium is very close to the chest wall. And that is, those are the patients in which uh, I am very uncomfortable using thoracoscopy because the port can essentially damage the pericardium and also the myocardium. Yeah, can we just play that please? No. So this is the fifth intercostal space. That is usually the space you can just about see, you can see where uh, the pacing uh, device incision has been. This is about three days after they, they had tried uh, putting a transvenous wire into the LV. We waited three days because of the contrast load. Uh, the creatinine on the day of surgery in the morning was 0.8 and then we proceeded with surgery. Usual dissection, this is, this is the size of the incision which I normally do for, for our minimal access cardiac surgeries as well. So again, if we can have the lights off, it will be much more clearer. What you see now is the pericardial fat. You move the pericardial fat to a side, the lung can come into the view sometimes, but if you by placing a wet swab, you can just move it away. It's not always possible to use, to have single lung ventilation. Sometimes it is, but most of the times, given their severe LV dysfunction, it is not possible. So you can now see better that you have a clear view of the pericardium, and this is roughly in the area of the obtuse marginal artery about an inch in front of the phrenic nerve. I tend to use the, uh, uh, a blade at this stage only because sometimes if there is no fluid at all and the heart is dilated, there cannot be much space. Luckily, in this patient, the, pleural eff uh, the pericardial effusion kind of gives you that uh, safety margin that the heart is not touching the pericardium. So, you can start to see the myocardium. This is in the OM1 territory. The one big advantage of, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, of uh, 
surgical epicardial lead. Now what I'm doing is these are the bipolar leads, there are two leads. We're just placing it one or two areas where we can see. Uh, either somebody from Dr. Nasiman's team is always there to tell me that this is a good position. Now you can see that within that area, every other area is covered by fat. Now those are bad areas for us to put. So the muscle is clearly seen. There is this little bit of ooze which can, which can happen if there is a small venule on the surface, but that settles down without any hassle. So each, uni each of the bipolar leads will have to be stitched twice. So one is at the top end, as you can see, and then one is at the bottom end, and then you, you will see this picture. So that is one end fixed. And then this is the second end being fixed. So you can now see that it is on the epicardium. And then we just will have to repeat for the second lead when we are putting this bipolar lead. Putting a unipolar lead, particularly with a screw system, which I will show a picture if I have time at the end, is much easier. You just put it onto the lead and then you just screw it in. So that is the ki a kind of rough final picture. I had to put these quite close to each other because you can see that the amount of myocardium available for me in this particular patient is actually smaller. Normally you will see much more. So once that is done, you have to open the pocket, remove the device, and then tunnel it from the mini thoracotomy site, deeper to the pectoral muscle, superficial to the rib cage, into the space. This particular video is of a, of, of, of a doctor who came to us from Chennai. So this is the tunneler. So you place the one end of the tunnel through the mini thoracotomy, and then the other end comes out through your uh, uh, p uh, pacing device pocket. You connect the lead at the other end, and then you just uh, pull it through. These bits are very simple. And once that is done, you connect it to the pacing device, and the rest of the procedure is straightforward, really. I'm not sure whether they'll give me my slides, because I wanted to show you how, they, how it looks on an X-ray and then how the post-op wound. Usual length of stay for us is about three days. Uh, the three days is also because of the ICD, which we have to put. Our experience in four of the six patients has been is because the patients are in failure as well, we have to deal with that pericardial fluid which continues to come because the pericardium, I leave it open. Uh, so the fluid comes into the pleural space and then comes out through the uh, pleural drain. So can we just uh, close that place? It's just repeating. So if you can go back to my presentation, we will skip the videos of the coronary, angio uh, coronary sinus angiograms. These are not playing, I'm afraid, but it's difficult anatomy. The uh, difficult anatomy, I have put two pictures. One was of a patient with, uh, yeah, can we, can we go into that slide? Slide 16. Slide 16, yeah. Can you just uh, enlarge that, please? Yeah. So this is a kind of a typical view. The pacing device is the same patient, actually, the next day when we took. So you have your leads, the RA lead and the R and then the RV lead, and then you now have the new LV epicardial leads. Next slide, please. Next slide. No, there's one more slide. No, no. Fine. Go back to the last slide. So this was a pre-procedure ECG. Next slide, please. Post-procedure ECG. Next slide, please. Can I do it from here? See, this is, this is the kind of wound you get on a day seven. Now, because, because this, the pacing device wound would have been opened almost twice, we tend to put interrupted sutures, and then I tend to leave them on for seven days. That will not prevent discharge. They just come back to the clinic, and then depending upon how the wound is, we either take it out on day seven or day nine, 
or sometimes alternate sutures on day 7 and day 9. And that you can see the mini thoracotomy wound. It heals very well, actually. Next. Uh, so this is a pre-procedure ECG, post-procedure ECG. I, I'm afraid I will not be the expert to talk about these. Uh, what our experience has been, no major mor mor morbidities. Average length of stay is three days. So in summary, LV epicardial lead placement is a safe alternative when transvenous lead placement is not available. One other additional advantage, which I think is that a larger LV space is available for us. So if you think that you are not able to get it in the right bit transvenously, you can consider an LV epicardial lead. And long-term studies have shown that these are as reliable and as durable as uh, transvenous wires. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hemant. One, any uh, question to Dr. Hemant? Could you have the lights on, please? Dr. Hemant, Dr. Abhijit here. Uh, what is the incidence of LV epicardial lead dislodgement or displacement? And dislodgement? Yeah, after epicardial lead placement. Very unusual. The reason, it's very unusual. The reason is for the bipolar lead, I have, as I have shown you, you really have to stitch it in. And the reason you have to stitch it in is otherwise the contact goes, particularly for the bipolar. So, uh, uh, seeing through the literature as well, the risk of displacement of that lead is extremely unusual. For the unipolar, there is a theoretical possibility because it's a screwing lead, it can get unscrewed. I, I think two things. I think these bipolar leads, are, I, ha I hate to say this, that bipolar leads are better because it's a pain putting them. You have to stitch it four times. So, in four places you have to stitch, so they are difficult, but the last patient, the patient which I showed you, you cannot believe, I couldn't believe myself, the threshold was 0 0.5, yeah. so they work very well. So I think we will probably, if uh, Nursi Mansar allows, I think we will do more of the bipolar than the unipolar. Thank you. Thank you.